Some job descriptions are a joke. Why is this one in Comic Sans? Because it's a joke. If you're trying to break into the field, you've probably seen hundreds of these where you look at the job description and even if you have no experience, you know that's not what a data scientist does. It's frustrating. So what I want to do today is explain why this job description is a joke. So if you're trying to break into data science, I'm going to help you identify what job descriptions you should just avoid because what's behind this? I don't know. It's probably not a data science job though. If you are trying to hire, I want to help you because your job description, it's unlikely it's anywhere near this bad. This is horrible, but you probably have one or two of the worst practices from this job description in yours. It's preventing you from getting top talent. So I've got two audiences here. One, aspiring data scientists. Two, I'm going to help you write a better job description. So let's dive in. This is my clown car job description. I get four or five of these a day. And if you're an aspiring data scientist, you're probably frustrated by this. If you're someone trying to hire and the recruiter is sending this train wreck out, you're not getting anyone. What are the signs of a bad job description? And it's right off the top. It's almost always this AI-ML. Those are not the same thing. Those aren't. Why would you ask for AI? No one's ever built an AI. Come on. It's ridiculous. Python. Great. Real descriptive. AWS. There are people that work in Amazon. At Amazon. On their web services teams. Who have no idea what all the products and all the services are. Come on, AWS? Okay, uh, congratulations, that told me nothing. That is not a skill, that's not a must-have anything. So, detailed job description. What you're going to find as I read through this is there are no details. There's none. These are all, this is, this is what a three-year-old thinks a data scientist does. Developing data models and algorithms best suited to a particular scenario. Which one? Like, all of them? Come on. That's not going to tell me anything. If anything, if you're looking for a senior level data scientist with that, I tuned out. I'm gone. I'm done. I'm not looking any further. And I think your company's a joke. That's the type of line that gets your job description ignored. I immediately know this is written by someone who's never done data science before. This is a junior level role. This is an entry level role it, immediately because that's the kind of team that this is, that this represents. And so if you're an aspiring data scientist and you read this, it doesn't matter how senior the skills and qualifications sound. This is a rookie team. This is a team that is not doing data science or machine learning. They're faking it. And this job description is intentionally complicated to make them feel like they're qualified. And I kid you not, there are teams that write job descriptions this way. They don't know what they're doing. And they're looking for the moon. And this is the result. And you're going to end up on, like I said, it's a rookie team. You don't want to work with these people. A self-starter. I mean, seriously, read this. And just read it. You have started something on your own before. That's what a self-starter means. Why are you being repetitive? You've started an open source project? Are you kidding me? So you are an open source pro you've started an open source project and you think this is in any way something that you would want to be a part of this job description? No. A new project within a company like anything. I could have started like a fitness project to get everyone to lose 10 pounds. A startup. So I am a startup founder and I'm going to look at this as credible. No, I'm not. Or something else. Come on. This is bad. Exceptional computational background. And you think you need a PhD to have an co exceptional computational background. <laughs> there are people with a high school diploma who write algorithms and, and do an excellent job with the foundational concepts of software engineering and software development. You don't need a PhD to do that. And if you think you do, you don't know what you're doing. You've never built an actual product before. Exceptional business background. Managing client relationships on technical projects is not an exceptional business background. That's just basics. It's 101 stuff. Assessing effectiveness of the data. You don't know what a data model is, obviously. If you write that line, you don't know what a data model is. Exceptional communication. Seriously, communication skills. You're asking me for communication skills in a job description that's written so badly, you don't have punctuation. Your grammar's bad. 
I have no idea. I'm halfway through the first page. I have no idea what you would be doing in this job. You want effective communications, if communicational skills, you have no way of judging that. How would you even know? You obviously don't know how to communicate yourself. Using different data gathering techniques. What do you want me to stand on the corner? Hey, you got data? Is that one of your uh, different data gathering techniques? Come on. Keep up to date with the latest technology trends. Like what kind of technology? Like greatest GPUs? The Use modeling to improve customer experience by optimizing work schedules and events. What work schedules? What events? What, what do you think customer experience is? You don't, obviously, they don't know what they do. Develop processes and or tools to monitor model performance and accuracy. That's the first legitimate job requirement for this whole thing. That's the first one. This is, if you've done a job description, if you're writing job description and you're looking at this and it's making you cringe as badly as it's making me cringe, what they've done wrong is just throw a word salad in. Don't do that. Be very specific. Like developing processes and or tools to monitor model performance and accuracy. That's specific. I get it. So this is a production facing role. This is a role that does a lot of ML ops and the, the back end processes. Okay, got it. Extending data with third party sources of information when needed. Don't write something like that. Don't. Data gathering. Vague. Extending data with third... Vague. Tell me you want someone who can source data and build and curate data sets. That's how you say it. This is... I don't know what that is. Processing... Okay, if you're a data scientist, you know how to do this. Data wrangling is part of the job. We already know that. Don't, don't put it in as a line. We know. You're, you're expecting a level of proficiency. And so you say data scientist, we already know. Doing ad hoc analysis and representing results in a clear manner, unlike your job description. Communicate results. Just say strong communication skills and then tell me who I'm communicating with. Am I communicating with other technical folks? Am I a technical communicator? Am I communicating with customers? In this case, they talk about client communications. Who's the client? What level am I communicating with when it comes to the client? Is that a C-suite? Am I communicating with business analysts? Am I, this tells me nothing. And so a section like this, if you want to fix your job description, be specific. Tell me what I'm going to be doing as a data scientist. Because what I have here, the reason why a lot of companies just get the phone book when it comes to resumes, when they put a job description out like this, is because this is so badly defined that people are going to gravitate. Low quality people are going to gravitate, gravitate towards this because it's obviously a bad team. So don't write vague copy pasta. I don't know what I'm talking about type requirements like this. They're bad. Don't do this. Be specific. And if you're an aspiring data scientist and you read this, this is do not work for these people. Don't even waste your time submitting a job or a job application. You may be a very qualified data scientist, but this is not a team that's qualified to figure out if you're any good at data science because they don't do data science. They don't know what it is. Required qualifications and technologies. In this section, if you're writing a job description, you need to connect a qualification or technology with the role. What are you doing? What is the output? What are you creating? What do you want this person to do with respect to work products? And what do you think they need in order to be able to produce those work products? Be specific. Again, experience with machine learning techniques. Well, it's a data science role. Thanks. I know that. Experience with explainability. When I see this type of a line, explainability, this person does not know what explainability is because explainability and model performance are two different things. And so they've jammed them together. And in their mind, it's the same. They're not. Make sure you don't do this when you're writing a job description. Don't jam disparate concepts together because someone like me is going to look at this and just say, okay, so you don't know what you're doing. Experience with code coverage, you mean unit testing, just say unit testing. I want you to be able to do unit testing. Tell me what your tech stack is so I understand what packages and what unit testing frameworks I'm likely working with. I'm an expert, trust me. I know what you need when you say unit testing. 
Experience with natural language processing and computer vision tasks leveraging deep learning techniques. Okay, so first, TensorFlow and PyTorch are not deep learning techniques. Somebody who is an expert at natural language processing is unlikely to also be a computer vision expert and vice versa. Those are two completely different fields. And if you are a generalist, you really don't understand how to do either one of those well. If you have both on your resume and you say I'm an expert at both, no, you're not. And this is the type of person that you're going to get. Someone who thinks they're an expert at NLP and CV, but really only has about a six inch deep understanding of the very most basic import from packages. What this tells me is you'll be working at a shop with people who don't understand the technologies that they're working with, finding and working with clients and not building anything with any value at all. You will be building the most basic across tons and tons of different business use cases. And what you build will not be that valuable to those businesses. This is a consulting shop that doesn't really provide the highest skill consultants to their customers. This is career ending in many cases because you start learning worse practices. If you get stuck in one of these teams, your career is very, very limited because the people you surround yourself with, and this is the important concept of evaluating a job description is to understand if you're surrounded by rookies and these are people with five to 10 years of experience, not delivering anything, not delivering anything with value that utilizes a model. This is going to limit your career because all of the worst practices that this team has in place are going to seep into you and become your processes. And then when you try to apply to a quality team, that's what they're going to see. You are going to come across as someone with five years of experience, but without the capability of actually producing work products with business value. So this is career limiting. This is one of the really important reasons why, number one, you need to evaluate this job description and say, I don't want to go anywhere near this company. And number two, if you're a legitimate shop and you find some of these worst practices, fixing them increases the credibility of your company and of your team. And so it's really important to try, if you've got one or two of these, you're losing credibility. And that's something that's easy to fix. Just change these requirements. Programming skills that allow you to be self-sufficient in handling data. So you need me to know Python, SQL, Spark, Spark, Scala, and Java, and all of that. I need all of that to be self-sufficient in handling data. No, if you want a data engineer, hire a data engineer. This is, this is five roles already trying to find one person with five roles. Really? That's not possible. Those people don't exist. Experience with large, how big? What's large to you? Is that gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes? Uh, what's the big in your large data set? The distributed computing, all of it? Uh, cloud-based, the distributed is cloud. You, you, this is the kind of thing where I read it and go, okay, so you don't know what cloud is. <laughs> cloud and distributed are the same thing. Hive Hadoop, no one uses that anymore. Modern shops don't use Hive Hadoop. They don't. They've moved away from it. It's, it's dying technology. It's legacy technology. Spark, okay. AWS, yeah, again, all of it. And then specifically, one service, SageMaker. Just say which services. Don't tell me all of AWS and then say SageMaker. Tell me what you actually work with. Give me your tech stack. Don't drag it out like this. Experience with statistical tools, packages, libraries. Why didn't you just say this up, up top? Just say that. That's it. Don't tell me NumPy's. If I'm a data scientist, I have worked with NumPy's, Panda, and Scikit-Learn. It's just those are packages that everyone knows and works with if they have a Python data scientist background. Don't put that in there. We know. Knowledge of statistical techniques and concepts. How am I a data scientist if I don't have that? Again, these are just basics that you already know by putting that job title out there. We don't need you to detail this. Ability to present information using data visualization techniques. Again, to who? What kind of data visualization packages are you using? Who are the target audiences? 
what type of information do I typically convey? And finally, you just throw in a, a master's or doctorate degree. Why? Why do you need a master's? None of this is senior level stuff. This is all junior level, entry level stuff. This is an analyst's role. I get it. Maybe you're using TensorFlow, PyTorch to deliver analytics, but that's all they're doing. So I hope this has given you at least an idea of what a bad shop looks like from the outside. What does this look like from the perspective of just looking at a job description and realizing that what's on the other end of this, no one on this team is a data scientist. No one on this team is doing anything aside from analytics. The work products that they create do not add value to the business or to their clients. And if you work on this team, your skills are going to degrade over the years and you are going to be less valuable going forward to other companies. If you're writing a job description, remember what we've talked about. Be specific. Tell me exactly what I'm going to be doing. Who am I interfacing with? Who do I work with? At what level are the people that I work with, both within the team and outside of the team? Be specific about what a day in my life looks like. What am I building? What kind of solutions? What kind of business problems have your clients had in the past? Or have your internal or external customers had in the past that you've solved? Tell me about your tech stack. Just lay it out. This is our tech stack. Don't expect me not to know. You're asking for someone who's competent. Don't put obvious stuff in there. I know data wrangling. I know I know data visualization is going to be part of it. Tell me what tools you use. Tell me who you talk to. What kind of data and what do I need to teach? Be specific. Be specific. And assume that you're targeting someone who's competent. These types of very specific, very just weird type of technology callouts don't make any sense. Are you using Hadoop? And if so, why? Are, are Do your people need to understand that processing, cleansing, and verifying the integrity of data is, is required for a data scientist role? Like, are the people that show up to your interviews unaware of that? Because if they are, your selection process is broken. And so that's how it sounds to an outsider when I read a job description like this. And that's why it's critical. If you're writing a job description for a data scientist, even if yourself, even if you are not a data scientist, just tell me what you need to do. Tell me what were products you expect that data scientist to produce. And trust me, I know what I'm doing. If I didn't, you wouldn't want me applying for the job. So the more requirements you have, the less likely it is you're going to get quality talent. Talk to a data scientist, talk to the people that you're hiring as if you are approaching experts, people that know what they're doing in the field. These simple mistakes, avoiding those, makes your job description so much more likely to get quality candidates. You'll be surprised at the quality of your, ta your talent pool once you make a few small improvements.